if you're gonna watch this video, please don't skip any part. This video will include steps such as hard drive partitioning, which could go terribly if not done right and could cause data loss, resulting in your data being gone and having to restart the operating system. If you follow all the instructions carefully, you should not experience any issues and totally do not feel scared. Although if you are extremely paranoid, a data backup wouldn't hurt. Enjoy the video! You might have clicked on this video. Because you might be in a scenario where you want to get shaders for Roblox, but you have a Mac computer. This video is going to teach you how to install Roblox shaders on the Mac. I am aiming on making this tutorial short and simple, to get you ready as soon as possible. This video will answer three questions. Why, what, and how. Why it doesn't already work, what you will need to do and have, and how to do it. So firstly, why doesn't it already work? This is due to the fact that Mac computers initially run Mac OS, and the program used for shaders was made to just be used with Windows. It is like if someone came up to you and started speaking a foreign language, you wouldn't understand anything. So what are we going to do to solve this problem? Install Windows on a Mac. Now this might sound weird, but trust me, it really isn't. Mac computers are just like any other computer, except for the fact that it runs its own operating system out of the box. So what do you need to have to follow the tutorial? You will need an Intel Mac that is for 2012 and newer, 64GB of free space available on your hard drive, and a USB flash drive that is at least 16GB in size. To check if your Mac meets these requirements, click the Apple logo in the upper left corner and choose About this Mac. You will see a screen like this. This will tell you what model you have, along with the specifications. Now, we want to look after the year the model was released and what processor it has. If the processor has the word Intel in it, and the mod is from 2012 and newer, you are in luck, as so you can follow the tutorial. You can use an older Mac if you want to, which is what I have done here, since this is the best Mac I currently own. But you will need to use an older version of Windows with it, or use a method to bypass the model check to install a newer version of Windows. Now, if the tab says you have an Apple processor or chip, you are out of luck, since these are not compatible with Windows sadly. Hopefully there will be a method in the future, but at the moment, I don't know because I don't have one of these to try it out on. To check how much storage you have, just click the storage tab in the program you just opened. If you have more than 64GB of free space available, you can follow this tutorial. If not, I suggest you delete unnecessary files you have stored on your computer. Now, also check if you have one of these Mac models. If you do, you don't need a USB flash drive to install Windows. If you don't, you will need to have a USB flash drive to put the installer on. If you don't have one of these already, they are very cheap to buy and as long as the flash drive is over 16GB in size, it should work. The first step is to download the Windows 10 ISO file from the link in the description. This is the file that contains the whole Windows installation. Choose the latest Windows 10 edition available and then your preferred language. Now choose the 64-bit download, do not choose the 32-bit one. After clicking, save the file wherever you want and let it download. Now, I want you to open a program called Bootcamp Assistant, which comes pre-installed on your Mac. And also plug in your USB drive. Make sure you don't have any important data on it, as this process is going to format the drive and delete all data on it. When you are in the program, choose Create Windows 10 on Data Install Disk. Choose the file you just downloaded and click Continue to create the Windows 10 Installer Disk. This will take a while, so do as you please until the process is done. Now, I want you to open the program again after the thing has finished, and now I want you to select the bottom option and click continue. If you don't use a USB drive, go ahead and run Bootcamp Assistant now. You will be taken to this screen. People who use USB drives will get the same one, without the ISO image select option. If you don't have a USB drive, click the choose button and select the ISO file you just downloaded. And now for both methods, you are now going to split your hard drive into two parts by dragging the slider. You are choosing how much space you are going to give each operating system. If you are not going to download a lot of things on Windows, I suggest you make the size small so you don't have valuable space taken up on the Mac OS side. Remember, the Windows partition still has to be at least 16GB in size. When you are done, click the install button and let it reboot. You should be taken to a Windows 10 installer. Now, choose your preferred settings and click next. Now type in your product key, which you probably don't have, so instead click the I don't have a product key button. Now, choose your version of Windows you want to install. For the average user, you should just choose Windows 10 Home. 
Click the small box and then next, because who in the right mind is insane enough to read the whole terms of service? Now here comes the tricky part, you want to choose the partition name bootcamp in all caps, and then click next. Do not choose anything else, as that could end catastrophic. Now sit back and relax as Windows 10 installs for you. And after going through the setup, you should be done. Well, almost. When you boot into Windows for the first time, you'll be greeted by this window. Follow all the instructions to install the bootcamp drivers. This ensures that everything works as it should, and that you get the best performance possible on your device. If it doesn't show up, follow my steps. Enter Explorer, then open your USB drive. Go to the bootcamp folder and run setup.exe. This manually opens the bootcamp driver installer program, and from there you can install it just like you otherwise would. You can just install the changes like normal now, but enabling them without the right keys can be hard with such a limited keyboard there is on the MacBooks. This is where the on-screen keyboard can be useful. By searching it up and running it, you gain access to a lot of keys that the MacBook doesn't have already. This is great for shaders with hotkeys that include keys only featured in bigger keyboards. If you want your Mac to boot into macOS again, you can do so by holding Alt or Option when the start of chime plays. And if you want the computer to automatically run select operating system unless manually chosen, you can do so too. By holding Ctrl in the boot picker, the arrow will be shaped as a circle instead of pointing upwards. By clicking on it in that state, the next time you boot the Mac, it is automatically going to choose that operating system. Now I want to thank you all for watching my video, if you enjoyed it please leave a like, if you really enjoyed it please subscribe too, doing that will motivate me to create more videos like this, which could maybe yet again help you in the future. Since this is a very advanced tutorial, feel free to ask questions in the comments, I will try to reply to as many as I can, and there might be other people who can answer your questions too. I really don't feel like I have anything more to say, so see ya next time. <laughs>